Hey, I'm here going to talk about tongue arch a little bit. <sighs> Simply because although I've tried to explain it before, even demonstrate it before, people still have trouble actually doing it. Now a lot of people think that they're doing tongue arch. This is for all brass players really. Um, tongue arch as you probably should know is like the second stage of compression. Diaphragm first, tongue arch in the bottleneck of the throat second, and your aperture and your ability to keep your aperture narrow is the third stage of compression. But it's that second stage of compression which is really important in the, 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 the problematic area for most brass players. A lot of you think you're doing it but you're not. I can instantly recognize, I don't even need to hear you in the same room. And that's why I'm so effective teaching on phone and by Skype. I can hear when someone is not doing tongue arch because they have this strained force sound that does not come with the tongue arch. It comes when you're not doing the tongue arch. When you got the tongue arch, it's free, it's effortless. You can just tell there's a different kind of quality to the sound. I'm going to try to get down and dirty in my mouth. I think you can see it. It's not going to be pleasant. But some of you got to realize what's going on. When I talk about roll in and roll out, a lot of people don't get that. Um, I'm not sure why that is. So first of all, first off, um, you need to understand the concept of roll out and roll in. Roll out, roll in. Okay. When you are going higher. Eventually, when you really get an expertise at the upper register, you can do both of this in real time. And you can do it in the form of a glissando. Um, here's like low A. I'm not warmed up, folks, so pardon me here. Look at That's kind of a roll out, isn't it? More roll in, right? Even more roll in. Awesome roll in, okay? So I went from here. Sorry, it's flat. Not much roll in. In real time. A little bit sloppy. That's real time rolling, folks. To be able to do what I just did, you have to be able to roll your lips in and roll them out in real time. Now, for those of you who haven't um, graduated to that level, and actually, um, it's very, very difficult. Um, I have to say that um, I don't meet too many people that can do that. It's just difficult. So, your second best way to do it would be to already have the roll in in place. Okay. So when you're wanting to play higher, or if you have to start a higher passage, you need to already be rolled in. You can't start above the staff um, with a roll out. It's just going to have that strain sound. Even with my tongue arch. Let's roll out. Recognize that sound? I certainly do. Because I hear it in a lot of people that I teach. And most of the time when they get done with me, they don't make that sound anymore. Because they've learned proper tongue arch and roll in. So you can't start a passage. Let's go back real quick. Ultimately, you want to be able to do what I just did. Roll in and roll out in real time. Okay, that's ultimately. But during the interim, while you're still getting this down, you at least got to roll in when you're starting a higher passage. So you can't start above the staff with the roll out. You gotta start with the roll in. Roll them in. Roll in. That's rolling, folks. Seems like a lot of people don't get that. Um, I hardly ever get on the forums anymore for obvious reasons, but when I've gotten on there, 
it seems like every every other topic is about roll in and roll out. So people are still having tons and tons of problems with roll in and roll out. So get the roll in down. Now when you get the roll in down, you roll in your lips as much as possible and you're trying to put as much lip tissue into the mouthpiece as possible to play higher. So I'm rolling in. Let's say I want to go, let's just like ridiculously higher. I got to really roll in. I am a dry lip player by the way, but sorry. I'm just trying to get my roll in without scraping up my lips too much. Roll in. Now put now I'm gonna put some pressure and put as much lips in the mouthpiece as I can. Actually, that wasn't too horribly difficult for me. I'm not really warmed up. It's almost impossible to play too um, low or even low at all with the roll-in as extreme as I was doing. Watch. I mean, even that high C felt low to me. So roll-in extreme. I mean, I'm having trouble getting the high C out practically because I've rolled in so much and I got so much lip tissue that it really narrows down the aperture. Now I'll roll out a little bit. A little bit more. So for me, I actually had to roll out considerably to accommodate the high C, probably because I'm used to playing so much past that. And for you, you're gonna have to feel where you are on the instrument. You have to get the roll in, folks. It has to be there. Learn it, do it, use it. Now, if you got the roll in without the tongue arch, remember at the beginning I was doing the roll out on the high A, but with the tongue arch. What happens if you have the roll in with no tongue arch? Other people sound like this. So they got the roll in part down, but they don't have a tongue arch. So, it sounds like this. Roll in, Again, the hallmark of somebody who is not doing the tongue and arch properly is a very forced and strained sound. And of course, you don't really have a lot of good range if you're not doing the tongue arch at all. So, hope you recognize that sound. If you hear that in your own sound, you need to start uh, paying attention here and get with the program. Get that tongue arch down, get the roll in. So, roll in, or roll in, but no tongue arch. Listen to the difference when I go higher. Okay, roll in. Draw my tongue. Sounds like crap, doesn't it? It's got that forced, strained, quivering, wavering tone uh, that people get when they're not using tongue arch. So put the tongue arch back on, and I don't know if you can tell this, but I'm one arming this myself, which is not easy um, to play and do this at the same time. But I'm actually holding the camera. With tongue arch. Notes lock in. In fact, that almost hurt my ears, folks. That was louder than, okay? <laughs> wow. So, um, and I was one one arm banded on that um, double A scale, right? So, now let's go back to what's going on inside your mouth. Low C positioning. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, there you go. You can see my tongue. Ah. Uh, so, for low C. Ah. Uh, I'm going to freeze my tongue when I get done playing with no tongue arch. Low C. Notice there's hardly any rolling. It's just more of a roll out. Uh, 
That's where my tongue was. Flat with that kind of dip into it. Let's see what happens if you do the tongue arch. Now the tongue arch should be with your tip of your tongue right there behind your teeth. Here. Okay, now you got the first part of the tongue arch. Now the tongue arches up. That is your tongue arch when your teeth are shut. Okay, that's not here. Some people are doing all kinds of wacky crap and it's not gonna help you. In fact, I don't even know how some people can do it. Your tongue arch is not just arching up like that. I don't even know how you can play if you're doing that, but some people are arching it up, but they still sound pretty bad. And the reason is you have to have your tongue anchored. The tongue can be anchored at the top of the bottom teeth. Here's the, the bottom teeth, obviously, They're near the top. Right there. Or down lower. I'm right down almost at the gum line. You getting this, folks? Oh, uh, why are we doing this? Because no air is coming around the sides of your tongue. The only the air can come up and over the tongue and come down and come out your aperture. That's why just building lip strength and chops is not the be all end all to everything because you have to have this air sped up at the second stage of compression. The air is coming up here. Now you've already got the first stage, uh, stage down. We're not gonna talk about that right now with the diaphragm. But basically it's, it's a bottled up high compressed air. So that's diaphragm. The air is coming up through your throat. It comes in and immediately it should meet the resistance of your tongue. Resistance meaning you reduce the space in your mouth. Ah, E. Now it has to travel up. And down. And when it comes down, it comes down right there. It comes out your aperture. You got to get that, folks. If you don't get that, you can actually go through my four-month program and build up chops of steel. And yes, have gain in range and endurance. But you're you haven't hit that sweet spot. You're still going to be struggling with mouthpiece pressure, even though you you have strengthened all this up. You have strengthened up a lot of things um, during my course or if you take somebody else's course, but if you don't get the tongue arch, you're really missing that sweet spot that um, a lot of people that excel in the upper register are enjoying. It just makes life a lot easier and more efficient. So you gotta get that down. You need to invest whatever time it takes for you to get the feel down for yourself. Ah. Uh, that's low C for me. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Now, when I go above high C, my tongue arch is so high that it's rubbing against the roof of my mouth and almost stopping the bulk of air to come through. I mean, I'm really blowing hard to meet, not because the note's um, hard or high, because it's meeting a tremendous amount of resistance. Um, inside my mouth. Once I meet that resistance, the air spins out so fast, and then you see what happens with the roll in. Everything links and syncs up to be able to get those high notes out with the least amount of effort and the most amount of efficiency. So, again, low C. I'll freeze it. That's where my tongue was, and you saw where my lips were pretty much a rollout. <laughs> tongue still low, but it is higher than it was with the low C, and my jaw is up. Low C, the middle C is more up. So I think your jaw dropping down. 
when you go lower. I'm exaggerating. Up. And it goes up as high as you can get it when you're really going into the upper register and the extreme upper register. So high C. Hey. You see the beginning of my tongue arch? So I didn't even have a full tongue arch for my high C. Don't need it. I guess I'm just a little bit lucky. I just don't need it after doing it for all these years because I also have this to rely on. And also, I also have a lot of hot air. I think uh, people know that one, right? So that's even when I'm not playing the horn. Now let's go a little bit higher. Um, roll in. Oh yeah, tongue arch was up there, way up there, and almost probably at the max, but not quite, because my max starts to get, uh, my, my tongue really, I can feel the brunt impact of it when, uh, for me, when I'm going to my highest notes. Ah, got the B out, not the double, not the triple C. Once I'm at, for me, uh, triple A, triple B, and triple C, my tongue is like, uh, it's just shaking, it's just grinding as hard as it can to, to lift up and close off the air at the roof because it's trying to make just a little pinprick of a space for the air to come through extremely fast and then come down. And then after that, it's up for my lips to be able to continue grip into the mouthpiece and hold that narrow aperture. As soon as you have a millimeter flinch where your lips can't do that, all of a sudden you, you drop. You could drop a fifth when you're up that high. So I hope this video helped explain what most of you think you are doing, but you're not. Tongue arch, just like diaphragm, is not theoretical. It's something that you really employ you really employ so tongue arch take a good look roll in tongue arch it's not pleasant to look at but so many people have problems with that uh, you just need a little tough unpleasant love in this video so we talked about roll in, roll out. I got up close and personal. Roll in. Sorry, roll out. Roll in. Roll out. Roll in. You need to understand that concept and you actually need to, need to be able to apply it. That means really do it. Not something you're thinking about. You are really doing the roll in and roll out. You are really doing the tongue arch and then flattening the tongue back out when you go lower. You are really moving your jaw up and down, depending on what register you're playing in. These are things you're really doing, and if you're not really doing, but you're just thinking about them, you really are having problems, and you're not sounding the way that you likely could. So this is all about technique and feel. It's like riding a bike, there's a technique to it, but also there's a feel that you got to learn, right? So technique and feel. This is not about um, lifting weights and getting stronger, making your chops stronger. This is all about applying technique to what you've actually done. The conditioning of your embouchure and your lips, you apply this technique to it, and it's just you're going to have that wow experience. So now, for those of you who thought that you could just watch this video and sail on into the silvery seas uh, with no more problems, no. Uh, upper register and endurance is the most challenging technique on the instrument, bar none, bar none. So um, I gave you some really good advice on this one to help you, but you still need to get involved in a process. So many people, when I say so many people, it just gets ridiculous. I mean, every time I log on to Facebook, can you help me with the high note tip? 
can you help me with this? Can you show me this? I mean, well, first of all, it's my job, you know, and uh, people sometimes pay me for doing that. But second of all, no, I can't just show you a quick little tip because one quick little tip is not going to help you attain your goals. And the reason is because most people don't understand improving your upper register in endurance is a process that you must go through. It is a process that you must go through. And you need to have somebody show you the correct process and the right timeline to accommodate your goals. And a couple of um, techniques, a routine from some guru, uh, meaning one technique from one, from one routine, or some tips and tricks, just ain't going to cut it. You're just not going to get what you want. So um, I've shown you some pretty good techniques here, which is a part of it. But you have there's no shortcuts. You have to go through the process. You got it, my friends? I hope you do. And I hope this helped. Bye for now. It's Kurt Thompson. And you haven't forgotten my website, have you? TrumpetSizzle.com.